Pay me first. Always it's the woman who pays and pays and pays. You think not? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Cliff, that's the next one. Leave her alone. We'll go out of it. Give me a break. I'll give you a break. I'll break hey, you. Hey, Corbett, pipe down them flaming youth or find yourself another fuck. This ain't no speakeasy. I know it's the Biltmore, but who moved it over here to Third Avenue? <laughs> <laughs> She's funny that way. Let's pipe down. Yeah. Come on, Mary. Give me a cup. Hello, Mary. How are you? Hello, Mary. What kept you so long? Listen, I know a good quiet game if you boys won't dirty it up. Oh, we won't. Let's play two. What's true? It's the big moment for the boys. They can ask you any question they like, and you have to tell the truth. <laughs> oh, that's my game. <laughs> oh, local boy gets a break. I'm going to be dumb and not learn how. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Harry. You take a chance. Not me. I'm not here. Oh, you... Oh, oh no. No. <laughs> I got to hide. It's going to be good if you know what I mean. Come on, now. Well, who are you? The name is Mary. And who is Mary? A working girl. <laughs> <laughs> the kind that heaven protects? Up to now. <laughs> oh. In love? Sure. Who with? A man. <laughs> What's his name? Even the census taker wouldn't ask a question like that. Oh. <laughs> Guess that'll hold you for a couple. <laughs> uh -huh. Pass her by, handsome. I'm a grass widow. You can go as far as you like. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Pardon me. <laughs> The villain still pursues her. Say, that's a swell way to get acquainted, that game. Let's go a step further. I'll buy you, Violet. <laughs> Who's the lucky man? The one you're in love with. He's a big paper man. All wrapped up in your boss, I know. You should see my boss. He's so old that short skirts came in 20 years too late for him to appreciate legs. Even yours? My turn now. Shoot. Name, color, present condition of servitude. Ronald Wales. White, poor. Honest. Ambition? Not to have to work for a living. So I could go to the south of France and write a book. What do you do for a living besides kissing strange girls in hallways? I work in a broker's office. In love? I am not. Married then? I don't believe in marriage. That's not a new line. <laughs> well, now it's my turn. Did you like my kissing you? We're playing truth, you know. Yes. And yet you say you're in love with another man. A man who called you Miss uh, Landy when your name is Lyndon obviously isn't on kissing terms. And I'm human, believe it or not. <laughs> I believe it so completely that I'm going to stake you to another little kiss. Do I have to? You do. Well, far be it from me, dearie. But Freddy's established illegal relations with the drugstore and the gin awaits without. 
without us. He can finish telling you the story of his life in the kitchen. I'd be just as safe right here in the bedroom. Yes, but with you two in the kitchen, a girl can powder her nose. Come on. Good night, Ronnie. You must come to the races with us again sometime. Oh, I'd love to. Good night, Miss uh, Landy. Lyndon, you fool. Her name is Lyndon. I know, but Mary likes men who forget her name. Good night, Dolores. Good night, Mary. Oh, Scray. <laughs> You certainly fell for Ronnie like the breaking up of a hard winter. In the first place, I didn't. In the second place, what's it matter when he's just a handsome young Romeo with literary ambitions that make him a practically no use to a girl? Say that again. He's just a poor, harmless, charming young idiot who thinks that marriage would ruin him as an author. Ronnie Wales is worth two million dollars. What? Nice, isn't it? But call your shot, Mary. I hear his wife's nice, too. His wife? I hear the kids are grand. Twins. Boys. What a man. Oh, well, what a sap I've been. But why did he want to give me a song and dance like that? Oh, some say their wives are invalids. Some say their wives don't understand them. And some just say they're not married. Oh, Mary, I forgot to send that wire to the Wisconsin Mills. I sent it after lunch. Oh, well, that's fine. Say, what? you know I forgot all about that sales meeting tomorrow? The sales department's been notified. Better in company. Listen up. Thank goodness you never forget anything, do you? You do, though. Well, what now, Mary? Oh, my medicine. Well, I forgot that purposely. You take it when you get home. Yeah, yeah, all right. Good night, Mr. Ella. Come on, Gloria. I'll pick up food. I've taken this anyway. Thanks, Mary. Good night, Good night. Good night. There's only one trunk busy. That chick in the sales department is trying to talk another blonde out of a date. Littering Company. And hey, listen, Ed, she's got one of the swellest figures you ever looked at. I don't care anything about her swell figure. What I want to know is, has she got a friend? <laughs> Do you pack a gun, girlie? Well, Mr. Dunneen. Well, 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 it's Mr. Uh, Linden. Sure, Lyndon. Would you mind waiting a few moments in the sales department? Always glad to oblige. How are the old man's arteries? And when's the old duck gonna pass out and give us young fellows a chance? Mr. Ritter's going to be on hand longer than some of the rest of us, perhaps. There's a dirty crack in that somewhere, but Deneen passes it by. The name is Mary, isn't it? Why don't we get the Crown Publishing Company's account? Office hours are from 9 to 5.30. 
Do you ever try wearing your hair a little fluffier? How close have you come to getting together with the Crown people? Say, listen, if I can't sell them, they can't be sold. Run your handsome blue eyes down there. Hmm. Huh. This seems to be a confidential memorandum of the Crown's yearly requirements. They'll take that order at three and a half percent off list. Yeah? Then I'll buy $20 gold pieces for 19 bucks. Mr. Ritter's going to offer the Crown people three and a half percent off for that order tomorrow. Say, listen. Ritter wouldn't offer three and a half percent off for... You know, that's a remarkable coincidence. That's my idea exactly. In fact, I was going to sound them out on a discount basis the first thing in the morning and see if Ritter would approve it. But I've just been wasting your time. Not at all, girlie, not at all. You meant well. I was just ahead of you, that's all. Mr. Bronson lives at 478 Park Avenue. He left his office about 10 minutes ago. You can catch him if you go right after him. Consider that Deneen is on his way. But why the night work, girlie? Well, Mr. Ritter, not being in your confidence, is going to personally telephone Mr. Bronson that discount at 8.30 a.m. And you won't get credit for the order. Hey! Let me know when I can do you a favor sometime. You can do me one right now. Name it, girlie. Try and remember that my name is Lyndon. Well, of course it's Lyndon. Hey, plug me in on the switchboard, will you? I want to break a blonde's heart. You big businessmen are so brutal. <laughs> I know I shouldn't have listened, but at the same time, little girls shouldn't give away confidential tips to cheap salesmen. Why not give an ambitious youngster a break? Jim Deneen is no good. Hold your job long enough and you'll see Jim Deneen the head of this company. Out of a city of six million people, why do you have to pick him? You weren't here when I first started two years ago. It was my first job. I was scared to death. I'd have run away if it hadn't been for Jim Deneen. What'd he do? Offer to show you the pictures in his flat? He found me crying in the hall. Kidded me along. Told me to keep up a bluff. But everybody in the world was bluffing. Oh, he don't look like no big brother to me. So I've just tried to pay him back for the way he helped me. You're goofy about him. Maybe. He don't even know you wear silk stockings. I'm protecting my job, too. Someday, Jim will be the boss here. Good night, Chubby. Ronnie called you five times today. Did he? When a girl gets a sweet opening like Ronnie, she ought to cut herself a piece of cake. How do you go about that sort of thing? Call him up and tell him you picked out a swell apartment? You don't do anything. You just drift, smilingly. I'm no drifter. I swim. Upstream, if necessary. You darn fool. Well, John? You'll either take a trip to Europe now, or in about a year from now, you'll take a ride in a hearse. Hi. Bad is that? Mm hmm. Yes. Just a minute. It's Mr. Robinson. Tell him to come in, Mary. Now, look here, John. You can't see anybody else today. Oh, this is my banker. He won't get me excited. Well, all right. Now, remember, you oh. give up business immediately. Yeah. Uh, uh. Goodbye. Goodbye, now. Well, Hello, Tony. Tony. How are you? Won't you sit down? Thank you. Well, they tell me you haven't been downtown for a whole week. No. Doctor tells me I've, I've got to retire. Well, I'm terribly sorry. Sell out my business and go away for a long rest. Well, oh, I'm very sorry indeed. Yeah. Well, find someone to buy the business. Well, that's not so easy. 
Times are hard. Thanks. I read about a man who uh, retired and uh, sold his business to his employees. That's the modern method. Our banks might finance a deal like that if we were sold on the setup. And you could keep your name on the firm where it has been for 40 years. Well, who's the man to head it? Well, uh, Spaulding, your Chicago man. Yes, or Galt. Say, he's done very well with the timber and the mills. Well, there's that uh, new sales manager, Mr. Dunneen. Oh, he's too young, too fresh. Young blood's not a bad idea in an old business. Right you are. Oh, well, suit yourself. It's the lady shore in. And you certainly were anxious. The great Dunning isn't dressed yet. But come on in, honey. Well, 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 if it isn't little old Mary Linden and herself. I thought it was two other fellows from Detroit. Two other fellows named Honey. Yeah, sure, the same as Honey Twins. <laughs> <laughs> Make yourself at home. Dunning will grab himself a shirt. Okay. It's a pleasure, girlie. It's a pleasure. Like it? Yeah, it's all right. How do you like my new apartment? I suppose it's much smarter than your old one. Sure. New contract, new salary, new flat. Got a progression, you know. I think it's pretty swell myself. Stunning. Oh, I forgot. You're the prudish type who likes women old-fashioned. <laughs> you're pretty regular at that. I think you're swell. You don't know me. You only know my job. I smoke sometimes and wear an evening dress with absolutely no back to it. No. And have been known to uh, drink a cocktail. That is, when urged. I urge you. I beseech you. Well, rather than have my clothes torn in a struggle, I will. <laughs> that is, unless it has orange juice in it. I'm sorry, it has. No, thanks. Well, I'm glad to know you, Mrs. Rex. <laughs> and uh, the next time you come, we'll have that sauerkraut you crave. <laughs> All kidding aside, let's you and I get together sometime, huh? Let's, sometime. <laughs> well, knowing that you don't love me for my body alone, I suppose you've come to make me president of the company, huh? Well, maybe vice president. Mr. Ritter's got to retire. He can't fire me. I've got a contract. Ironclad, airtight, and tied up with pink string. Robinson of the City Trust could be sold on a proposition to buy Ritter's stock for you and pay for it out of the profits. No, it isn't hashish. Listen to me, Jim Dunning. I know what I'm talking about. Robinson wants to keep the firm's business. I know. Oh, don't worry. He'd make something out of the deal himself. You have a fine record. Robinson's wide open for young blood. I'm not having any pipe dream if you've got the stuff to sell the proposition to Robinson. No, oh, I suppose you think I haven't, huh? What did you think I came here for? Find out there's more than one cough in a car load? Give me the lowdown. Now, here's the way I'd approach him. Mr. Robinson, you're a businessman. I'm a businessman. I feel sure that I can double the firm's business in the next three years. Naturally, my efforts would be increased if I were working for myself. My plan guarantees the continuance of the relations and profits you have made with us. It is not only a bank's privilege, but its duty to foster the development of the concern with whom its past, present, and future is allied. That's the speech that'll get Robinson. 
Mr. Robinson, you're a businessman. I'm a businessman. I feel sure that I can double your son's business in the next... Oh, I'm terribly sorry. Hey, what's the idea? Oh, here, uh, blot it off. I'll, I'll see if I can find you another one. Fifteen bucks for that shirt, woman. Oh. Here, wear this one. You see, I ain't going to a funeral. Would you take a spot of color, sort of brighten up the spirits and show off the Dunning personality? Bankers are very conservative. Well, maybe you're right. Hmm. Well, I guess I'll be going now. Well, hey, I didn't thank you yet. You're such a swell tip. But then I'm the only one that could carry out the scheme. You better change your shirt. Remember, you've got to be there at 9.15. I'll be on time, don't worry. And thanks again. Oh, uh, Mr. Robinson's address is on that slip of paper. Leave it on the table. I'll put my own number here, too. Will you call me up as soon as you leave, Mr. Robinson, and tell me how it came out? From the nearest drugstore, baby. Hello? Who is it? Mr. Dunneen. Mr. Dunneen? Oh, oh, come right up. Come on in, I'll be right up. Oh, I thought it was someone else. I intended you to. Why did you say you were Mr. Dunneen? What do you know about Mr. Dunneen? Oh, he's the one that calls you Landy when your name is Lyndon. How did you find out where I live? Oh, Dolores. If Mohammed won't come to the mountain, then the mountain must come to Mohammed. But this is the first time the mountain had to wear a false beard. Do sit down. Oh, thanks. And I was just going to bed. <laughs> For Mr. Wales, she is just going to bed. For Mr. Dunneen, oh, come right up, come right up. I don't care to discuss Mr. Dunneen. But I want to talk about Mr. Dunneen. I want to talk about you. And I want to talk about me. Oh, I know all about you. Ronnie Wales. Poor, white, honest. Ambition? Not to have to work for a living so that I could go to the south of France and write a book. And I don't believe in marriage. But I am married. You know that. But we haven't lived together for three years. As a matter of fact, I haven't seen her for two. Where's your cane and your tin mug? And the little dog to lead you. And how are lead pencils selling these days? Hello? Yes? Hello, Mary. I put it over, knocked him for a loop. And listen, I'm to be vice president. Oh, I'm so glad for you, Mr. Dunneen. The bank retains 20%. The balance for me, and dividends credited on purchase. I'm going to have ten years to pay it off, but I'll knock that for a raw basket. <laughs> hey, shut off that music. All right, darling, don't yell at me. Nice drugstore you're phoning from. Well, I, uh, I'm home. Some people dropped in. 
Then don't let me keep you. I'm entertaining myself. Go away, darling. How can I talk business with you mauling me so? Oh, but darling, I can't keep my hands off you. Excuse me. I'll see you at the office tomorrow. Can I play some jazz now? No, I got business to attend to. Finish your drink and I'll call you a cab. All right. Next time. Don't make me laugh. <laughs> Good night, Mary. Good night. Take a cable to Erickson. I have gone to great lengths to convince you that it would be unwise to open an agency in this country. Use your signature. How's that sound? Why don't you say something about our overhead being so distributed that it cuts down costs? Oh, now put that in. Make it short, you know. Anything else? Oh, let me see. Ah, excuse me. Went to a party at Mr. Robinson's last night. Late. Uh, oh, by the way, his daughter's name is Helen, isn't it? Ellen, I believe. Oh. Don't you think we ought to make one more try for Raymaker's business? I closed in the last night at Mr. Robinson's house. For five years at 2.39. Oh, Jim, that's splendid. Not bad, what? <laughs> it's more than splendid. It's the biggest thing you've done. I'm proud of you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'd be proud of myself if I didn't have this awful head. It took a lot of champagne to warm up on Raymaker. As my old man used to say, I had from the dog that bit you. Gee, what a tough time my folks had. I wish I'd had my luck while they were still living. Were you very poor when you were a kid? The greatest tragedy of my life was graduating from high school with a patch on the seat of my trousers. And all the other young squirts and tuxedos. You've done remarkably, from a handicapped start. Thanks, Mary. That's nice of you to say that. Hmm. Yes? Just a minute. The Miss Daisy Presby says she has an appointment. Shall I get rid of her? Oh, no. No, wait a minute. Have 
I'd be weak. Uh, I've, uh, I've hired an assistant for you. You've been working too many nights. This girl can take some of the dictation. But I haven't complained. I don't want you to wear yourself out, you know. I thought it was my job to engage the new girls. Oh, this is, uh, this is different. I see. Jim, I'd rather not have an assistant. I can attend to everything. I'm not a bit overworked. I know, but I've hired the girl. She's to start in the morning. I'm afraid I must decide on the advisability of these things. Very well. <coughs> well, what else? By the way, uh, I was right about tails and a white tie for the Robinson dinners, wasn't I? If there's one thing I flatter myself on, it's knowing how to dress. Of course. I can't understand why this florist bill should be $100 higher than last month. We haven't ordered more than usual. And I'll check it over. Uh, by the way, uh, send a dozen American Beauty roses to Miss Ellen Robinson. Very well. Oh, by the way, how much does Miss Daisy Presby go on the payroll for? Uh, put her down for 50 a week. And see that no one disturbs me. This is James Deneen's secretary speaking. I want you to send two dozen of your nicest roses to Miss Ellen Robinson. Yes, hold the phone a moment. I'll give you her address. What? Oh, you have her address. Yes, it's the same, Miss Robinson. All right, thank you. Miss Presby? Mm-hmm. Fill out this card, please. You're to start in the morning. You may have the small desk over there. these chairs. There goes my stocking. Six bucks a pair. Oh, I picked up a swell combination at Wimbles. I'm saving it for my hope chest. Look. I asked you. Isn't that the thing you love to touch? Lovely. But they robbed you. I got the same thing for 14. Oh, don't tell me you wear French lingerie beneath that flower sack. What I wear next to my lily white body is, strange as it may seem, nobody's business. Soft goes Dempsey and Sharky takes it on the chin. Well, I think I'll just pop in and say hello to Jim. Wait just a minute. He doesn't wish to be disturbed. You can't go in when the red light's burning. Listen, sugar, I go past all red lights without even slowing down. Miss Linden? Mrs. Dunning ready for me? Expecting you. Oh, by the way, uh, hereafter I don't want Mr. Dunning bothered with any of the household details. I'll do the buying myself. Yes, Miss Linden. Fresh flowers in there for you, Prentice. Yes, Miss Linden. Good morning, Martin. Good morning, Miss Linden. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. How do you feel? Terrible. And that Clydem business has got to be settled today. I got another inside tip. Get some mail for you. Oh. Anything else, Mr. Dunning? That's all, thanks, Martin. I know that a price of 232 was discussed. 
If we get the order, Mary, you'll get a swell new fitted bag. I'd rather have a raise. You jealous because Miss Presby got one? Hardly. It's not the same situation. You're different. To your sorrow? She's just a diversion. She got her salary raised. I'll say she's diverting. You hate her, don't you? Certainly not. But she ruins the morale of the office. And from the things she says, you'd think she was one of the board of directors. You'll get a swell fitted bag nevertheless. Tired, Mary. Why don't you take a day off? As a matter of fact, I have an invitation to spend the weekend at Atlantic City. Fine, take the weekend off. You think Daisy can do my work too? She's a little inexperienced, but yeah, I think she can. I don't think so. I can postpone my Atlantic City trip. It's a standing invitation. Hope you feel better. Thanks, Mary. Boo! <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> I thought the black killer of Bayswater had got me. Theater, eh? Started for the theater, ended up by driving on the post road. Oh, sounds romantic. Who is he? Tim Deneen. How long has this been going on? It hasn't gone on. I've been out with him once or twice. He sends me flowers. Well, you've a lot in common. Uh, his neckties, for instance. That's not fair. He's improved unbelievably. He's a very remarkable young man. Oh. Like him pretty much? Pretty much. Then in the morning you'll see a doctor. Oh, don't be silly. I'm all right. No, you're not. No girl's healthy who prefers a good sound businessman to a dancing fool. But when I really stop fiddling, even Jim Deneen will dance. Well, now, don't you look forward to an existence of all afternoon at the horse show and all evening at contract with him. He's not the type. No. Just wait till I get him in my clutches. Oh. I'm afraid there's another woman in his life. What? Lip rouge on his handkerchief. They never learn, do they? Positively, no nonsense. Unless a contract is lived up to, it is not a contract. There is no reason why we cannot cooperate on an issue involving so much of our mutual welfare. Yours truly. Oh, what's the matter? The letter's too strong, Jim. You've got to be tough with Bueller. Write it as I dictated it. Very well. Well, now what have you got for me? Oh, uh, Martin says you need shirts. Any particular choice of color? Do I ever wear anything but white shirts? What do you think I am, a shipping clerk? I beg your pardon. Oh, Mary, uh, Martin had a new sort of evening tie for me last night. Narrow. Very smart. Tell him to order a dozen more. I bought it for you. Oh, and Mary, uh, change another Bueller. Tone it down. That part about, uh, positively no nonsense. 
Leave that out entirely. And Mary, I don't want Miss Presby to take any more of my dictation. What's the matter? Is she beginning to get breach of prophecy? Yeah? The Burden Brothers are here. The Burden Brothers? Oh, I have to take them out tonight and make hoopy with them. Do you want to come along? Do you think it's decent of me to take the place of the dear departed so soon? Huh? Are you sure you wouldn't rather have Miss Presby? I asked you, didn't I? I'd love to go. Shall I show the Burdens in? Yeah, show them in. Of course, the managers were very glad to have a society girl to go on the stage, but sometimes I feel it's very degrading for a girl from an old Virginia family. And you had to give up that big white colonial mansion. Oh, no. Mama lives there. I send her part of my salary every week. But of course, that doesn't leave me very much for myself. There, there, Sybil. Oh, Mr. Burden, but I only just met you tonight. Oh, well, let's have another drink and then you'll know me better. This little girl, Sybil, has had a heap of trouble, Jim. I think she needs something to brace her up. Trouble? Trouble? Oh, I remember that word. That's what poor people have when the rents do. Ha <laughs> ha, that's a good joke. Trouble's only something. Poor people have when the rents do. Oh, Mr. <laughs> Burden, are you really going to pay my rent? Oh, Mr. Dunneen, who's going to pay my rent? What'd you do? Blow the rent on that frock? What's the matter with this frock? Absolutely nothing. Looks like it's been poured in it and forgot to say when. I suppose you'd like me to wear this around the paper and pulp business. Well, you don't have to dress the way you do. The other girls don't. Oh, you notice that, do you? They make you notice it. And they can't all crave me. No, they just crave raises in salaries. How much do you get? Seventy. You should have more. That's sweet. <laughs> do you dance? Even better than I take dictation. Let's go! you had a place like this, Mary. Won't you come in a minute? I'd love to. figured out what your private life must be. I just thought of you as a perfect machine in an office. I gathered that. Mary. You know, Mary, I'm very happy that you and I got together tonight the way we did. Are you? I'm terribly fond of you. But how could I help it? Eight, ten, twelve hours a day together? Mostly behind closed doors? Proving that a working girl can be safe from the advances of her employer. 
Well, uh, I always figure that business and pleasure don't mix. <laughs> That's not it. You've looked at me a thousand times. And never saw me until tonight. I see you now. And you look pretty good to me. I wonder if it isn't the dress. Or perhaps the liquor. Have another drink. Oh, would you have liked it if I'd kissed you in the office when you first came to work for me? A kiss depends upon who's doing it and how it's done. How's this? You don't need that drink. I know all you've done for me. I wouldn't be where I am today if it weren't for you. I've been blinded by my own success. But from now on, things are going to be different. Jimmy, I've got to be a machine again. Past three o'clock. One of us has to be on hand at ten in the morning. Wyler will be there. Hang Wyler. Hang all the pulp and paper in the world. Hmm. Jimmy. Jimmy. All right. Give me a drink and I'll run along. You're drinking a lot lately. It's foolish. Let me be foolish tonight. It's a night of nights, isn't it? Good night, Mary. Good night, Jim. Bring your notebook. Good morning, Jim. Well, good morning. Take a letter to Berman. Dear Jake, I cannot understand the change in your attitude. I guess I had a little too much to drink last night, didn't I? Did you? 
Didn't you notice it? No. <laughs> That's good. I was afraid I might have... Well, I mean, did I get fresh or make a pass at you or anything like that? Why, no. That's a relief. You know, Mary, I don't remember a darn thing that happened after about 10 o'clock last night. I cannot understand the change in your attitude. Huh? You were dictating? Oh, yeah, yeah. I cannot understand the change in your attitude. I cannot understand the change in your attitude. As the weeks roll by, Good evening, Miss Linden. Good evening, President. Did the flowers come? Ready and waiting, Miss. Oh, there they are. Oh, aren't they lovely? I'll start with these, Fred. For those? Yes. Were the monthly bills all right? Yes, they were nicely checked and everything's under control. Mr. Dunning home? Not since this morning. He hasn't been at the office all day either. Well, that's understandable. I hope you don't mind my stepping into your province fixing these flowers. Not at all, Miss Linden. Who's the party for? Prentice, I asked, who's the party for? I thought perhaps you'd like to arrange these also. Why, what's that? Finish the flowers, Prentice? Yes, Miss Linden. I came over here. Ain't men the swine, though. What's the matter? What are you crying for? Society girl wins big paper man. What? Robinson's hooked Jim. Well, cut my throat. 
Wait a minute. Here, Mary, take a drink of this. Time for the speeches. A toast to the bride. Long may she wave. I try to help you, Mary, but I guess it's better to get it out of your system. If it, if it hadn't been for me. I know. I know. Oh, don't let anybody in. I don't care who it is. What's the matter, Mary? Oh, nothing. <laughs> Come on now, tell Ronnie everything. All right. I'll tell you. I haven't got any pride left. The engagement is announced of Miss Ellen Robinson to Mr. James Dunneen. I'm sort of licked, Ronnie. I made him look like a gentleman. I've taught him to speak the King's English. I've shared his troubles and worries. I've lifted him above the president. I've stood between him and a dozen cheap designing women. But when it comes to a girl with beauty and money and a glamour of position, I can't do a thing. A girl of his own class. The class I gave him. No, no, Mary, take it easy. It isn't that bad. No, take it easy. Come on. Oh, come on. Oh, all right, let's have a drink. Please don't, Mary. That isn't going to help you. Well, Raleigh? The next time, the next time, do you get me? We won't talk about that now. Oh, so you're going to spurn me too, are you? <laughs> After a while, we'll talk about that. Yes. Oh, send her in. Miss Ellen Robinson to see you. Yes, I will. I'm Ellen Robinson. Yes, I know. You came to see Mr. Dunneen? No, you. Oh, won't you sit down? Thank you. Miss Linden, when I first decided I wanted to marry Jim Dunneen, my father and I naturally talked it over. I'm sure your father approved. 
My father has known you for a long time. Only in a business way. So that's how I happen to know you're in love with Jim Deneen. That's not true. That proves it. Could I work alongside of Jim Deneen for years without falling in love with him? Certainly not. Get to the point. Your admission that you're in love with him hardly qualifies you from a fiancé's viewpoint for further employment. You want me to quit? At once. And if I refuse? I should tell him you're desperately in love with him and that it would be charitable to ask you to leave. You wouldn't do that. Oh, wouldn't I? When Greek meets Greek. What do you mean, calling me a Greek? Pardon my intrusion. Well, what do you want? Mr. Dunneen, I think I've been here long enough. Why, well, Mary, what are you talking about? I've got a better job. Short hours, more money. Now, Mary, don't do anything foolish. We'll talk this over later. There's nothing to talk over. I've had it in mind for some time. And it was just settled today. I'm leaving immediately. It won't inconvenience you any. Remember, you still have Daisy. Goodbye. Mary! Jim! Doing? Gonna quit? Get out of here. I want to be alone. What's this Presby tells me? You quit? You know what I've done for Jim Deneen, don't you? Sure, but Mary. And you know that because I've loved him, I played straight as a string. But you've known for some time that he was. And you know that I've met a dozen men. Nice men that wanted me. And what did I tell them? Like a fool, I'd say to them, no, 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 you can't have Mary Linden. She's a good girl. And what did I say to myself? Like a fool, I said, Mary, you just keep yourself a nice, fine little girl. And one of these days, Jim Deneen will realize how good and worthy you are. Baloney! But I thought that was all over. Last night, Ronnie told me, this there's Ronnie. And I like Ronnie. And we've had a lot of good times together. But when Ronnie offers me everything in the world a girl could wish for, what do I do? I turn him down, like the nice, fat-headed, virtuous little moron that I am. Well, that's all over, my fine girl. Mary, quiet. Somebody will hear you. Let him hear me. Where are you going? I'm going to Atlantic City. <laughs> I'll see you later.
I can't make the grade, Ronnie. Aren't you just asking for a lot of trouble and unhappiness? Can't you put him out of your mind? He's out of my life. I'm reconciled to that. But see this. Price tag off my nightgown. I found one of these on the floor of Jim's bedroom once. I knew the girl, and I despised her for being cheap and trivial. I just don't want to be that cheap myself. The funny part about it is that I'm priced at exactly eight dollars less than one of the most obvious young women I've ever met. Mary, dear, if my wife didn't have all the money in the family, I swear I'd get a divorce and marry you. I didn't ask you to buy my violets. No. No. Well, now, Miss Robinson, the Chicago train arrived a half hour ago, and I'm sure he'll come direct to the office. I'll tell him. Did you have a nice trip? Horrible. Let me alone. I can still take off my own coat. On the last 14 nights, I spent nine of them in Poland's. Well, how are things running? Oh, everything's perfect. That, uh, did it ought to go out? I wired in Saturday? Oh, well, no. Well, why wasn't it shipped? Oh, it wasn't Mark Rush. The other orders I wired in, have they been sent? No, I thought I'd better hold them till you got back. Go out and get all that stuff and get it off right away. Oh, well, I can. You can't? Why not? Well, I put them all in a folder and took them up to your house. Telephone my house and have Mark and my valet bring the folder down here right away. Well, I'm afraid they got lost last night in the confusion. Confusion? What confusion? In the fire. The fire? Well, what fire? Well, the fire in your library. Fire in my library? And in your bedroom, too. But uh, some of your clothes can be salvaged. <laughs> So what are you talking about? Well, uh, Martin thinks he can fix some of your clothes as soon as he gets out of the hospital. Hospital? Oh. How did this fire start? Well, the firemen were very nasty. They said it started from my cigarette. Your cigarette? What were you doing smoking in my house? Oh, I just sat down to smoke a cigarette. And don't you believe it, Jim. I didn't fall asleep. I was just thinking with my eyes closed. Are you sure you've told me everything? Think carefully now. Has the firm been in a bankruptcy? Or is my fiancé dead? Oh, no, Miss Robinson's not dead. She's been calling you for the last week, wondering why she hasn't heard from you. Get her on the phone. Now, isn't that a coincidence? Speak of the devil, and here she is. Get out. Hello, darling. Well, what's the matter? You look a bit wild-eyed. Nothing, nothing at all, dear. You must have been busy. I had no letters from you, only three little telegrams. And not a word for the past five days. Look, Ellen, for the past 14 days, I've been leaping in and out of Pullman's and living in lumber camps. And I simply didn't have the time. Well, I'm glad you don't have to travel often. I don't fancy myself as a neglected wife. I've got to do a lot of traveling. The paper business is in a critical state. Newspapers are buying up their own mills. Syndicates are being formed. For the next year, I'm going to be a leaping tuner all over these United States. But you don't have to do all the dirty work. But I do. No one else can do it as well. I'm not blowing my own horn. It's simply the truth. And we might as well face it. It's much better to face things in advance. Isn't it? Yes, dear. 
And now I'll be a please run along. I'm up to my neck in trouble. Why I ever let Mary Linden get away from me, I... I'll have my head examined, that's all. If I could find her now, I'd give her half the company to come back. I think not. Huh? Do you think I want a woman around here who's madly in love with you? Mary? In love with me? Rot. You did a lot of night work together, you two. See, listen, darling, you're a little mad. I'm no saint. I have my moments. But Mary Linden simply isn't that, that kind of a girl, that's all. Jim! There's a cop out here and he wants to arrest me. The arson squad wants her at headquarters for a statement about the connection between her cigarette and the fire in your home last night. I have no uh, suspicions of you, Daisy. Run along. You see, nobody has any suspicion of me. Come on. Oh, no. Nobody has any suspicions of you. I'm disgusted and humiliated. All the time it's been that cheap little collar, and I thought it was Mary Linden. Did you do anything to get Mary Linden to leave here? Certainly. But how dare you interfere in my business affairs? Business? That's good. A woman like Mary Linden. With Mary Linden the woman, you may have had a feminine right to be involved. But with Mary Linden, my private secretary, you've had absolutely no right to interfere. I believe you're in love with her. Listen, I'd fall madly in love with any woman who displayed the least bit of common sense. And now, Alan, forgive me if I'm rude, but I'm terribly busy. Too busy, I'm afraid. Well, suppose we let it go with that. Get me Mary Linden's apartment on the wire. Why, Mr. Deneen, Mary Linden has moved. I'm sorry, I haven't the slightest idea where to reach her. Come on up. Hi, how's Trick? Oh, sit by me. What gets you up so early? Oh, Freddie got jealous last night and broke all my Rudy Valley records. <laughs> so I threw him out and went to bed early. Got a job yet? Nope. Well, ain't it about time you went to work? No hurry. I don't care if I don't work for a month yet. Jim Deneen tried to get in touch with you last week. He did? What did you tell him? Exactly what you told me to. I wonder what he wanted. How should I know? Say, did I tell you Daisy got canned? No. Uh-huh. Nope. Nothing there. The Marines have landed and the situation is well in hand. Well, listen to this. The forthcoming marriage of Miss Ellen Robinson to Mr. James Deneen has been called off by mutual consent. Where, Dolores? Let me see. Where? Oh, it isn't in the paper. But it's liable to be any minute now. Or I've been listening in over that switchboard in vain. Dolores! Mary! <laughs> Ain't that <laughs> Mr. Dunneen, are we going to work again tonight? 
These late hours are just ruining my boyfriend's evenings. Yes, tonight and every night until I find the secretary who's satisfactory. Have you got the answers to those want ads? Yes, here they are. Oh. Oh, this sounds possible. For three years, secretary to the president of a pulp and paper concern. Best of references. Have this Miss Helen Clark come in and see me this afternoon. Yes, sir. Won't you sit down? Thank you. I, uh, I see you've had office experience. Yes, I left my last employer because he got engaged. Mary, then take off those clothes and be yourself. Oh, Mr. Dunning, do you always ask girls to disrobe in your office? No, I didn't mean that. You know I didn't. I mean, take off your coat. We've got work to do. But I get $100 a week now. All right, Mary, of course, $100 is all right. Stop joking. I've got just three days to get affairs in shape so I can beat it up north and cover next year's supply. What, what are you standing there like that for? Oh, Mary, please, I need you. Don't turn me down now. Grab a notebook and get to work. Colvin, don't bring me no matter who it is. You stay at that switchboard ready to take any calls that come in until I tell you you can go. I'm going to do a day's work. Come on, Jim. Uh, take a letter to the Stockholm crowd. Uh, after due consideration of your proposition, I have decided to... Oh, Freddie. I've been waiting for hours for that big stiff to let me go home. He's still dictating. Shut up, Freddie. Freddie, will you please shut up? Shut up till I get my heart beating properly. What do you think? He ain't dictating. He's still dictating. He's gone over to Jersey City to marry Mary Lyndon. Oh, ain't that great? 